Thanks, Cynthia. Did you know that one? No. Didn't. <clears throat> After service last Sunday, I was visiting with folks and man came up to me pretty excited actually, shook my hand and said, Pastor, I just have to tell you that I've that was the best I've heard you preach in two years. Funniest stories. And he shook my hand and I said, well, did you know I, di- I didn't speak today? And he said, yes, I did. No. <clears throat> it's not a true story, but maybe a truth in there somewhere for us. And there is a truth for us today from Scripture, and that is the truth of consistency and the life and our consistency centers around one thing, one word, one person. And if you have a Bible, turn to John fifteen four. If you have a Bible, keep your fingers handy because we will look at several verses today. But John 15, verse 4 is where we will first begin. John chapter 15, Jesus speaks with his disciples and it's a long conversation, the longest recorded conversation we have of Jesus with his disciples in Scripture. It's his closest friends. It comes at a time of uncertainty for his disciples and for himself. For the better part of three years, they've traveled, they've listened, they've watched, everywhere, everything with Jesus, and now he says he's leaving. And he tells them, do not let your hearts be troubled, because their hearts are troubled. And in John 15, 4, he says, remain in me and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. And I thought of this last night. So I had two phone conversations. I spoke with Mick, and he talked about coming off a troubling few days. You drive down on Monday, expect surgery for your wife Tuesday, Expect that you're going to drive back on Wednesday. And it turns into something quite different. His concern is for Sherry to be bolder in Boulder and not home, to not be here. It's troubling for him. And then shortly speak, after speaking with him, Joanne called. And she spoke about news of the tragic death in their family of their 16-year-old grandson. And now she and Roger are on the road. These things, these troubling things, they happen all too often in our lives. And the trouble seems greater even at night, it seems. Jesus' conversation with his disciples takes place at night. And in John 15, 4, it gives us perhaps the most important words on consistency that we could ever hear as believers, as followers of Christ. Remain in me. Remain in me. When your wife is in ICU, when your grandson is suddenly gone, when turmoil comes in our lives, remain in me, and I will remain in you. I read an article a week ago, and the author said, Imagine if I took a tree and I planted it in my front yard, and then not too long after I planted it, I thought, Well, you know, maybe I'm going to put it in my backyard. So I uproot it. And I take it and I plant it in my backyard. And then a few months go by and I think, you know, it really was better in the front yard. So I uproot it again and I bring it back and I plant it in the front yard. And he wrote, not only will that tree fail to flourish, it will also struggle just to survive. We can be like that with God and in our relationship to Jesus Christ. I'm going to follow Christ. I'm going to remain steadfast in Him. I'm going to pray. I'm going to do all these things. And then a month later, we uproot ourselves and and things change. And then we disappear for a while. Then we come back around. And then we're there for a while again in whatever thing we're at spiritually. And then we uproot again and we go back to an old life. and, And we just cannot grow spiritually this way. Jesus says, remain. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. Remain in a given place. Remain in fellowship with God. 
regularity, consistency, remain in a relationship, remain in a vocation. Things we don't think about much these days because everything changes and people do different things all the time, but God says remain. Remain. Remain in a church. Our hearts and our prayers go with those who have upheaval in their lives, like Mick and Sherry, like Joanne and Roger, like the things that we shared today, for God to remain that people know that God is with them. In this way, we remain in them too, and not us, but through our prayers, God, and they remain in us. The meaning of fellowship, the power of Christ, the importance of consistency in relationship remain. Turn then to John, the first turn to first John rather, chapter two. A short little writing way towards the back of your Bible. First John two. First John two six is the verse we'll look at many years after the conversation Jesus had with his disciples to remain. Long after his death and resurrection. Long after Jesus returned to the Father, John was the last one standing, so to speak, from that conversation, the last of the disciples. Often referred to, John was, as as Jesus BFF or Jesus Bay. And if you're not sure what those things mean, talk to a teenager, they'll tell you. John is now an old man, and he's in exile on the Isle of Patmos. And as he writes, I picture him writing with a shaky hand. He remembers that long ago conversation with Jesus just before Jesus was arrested. And he remembers that Jesus said, remain, remain. And so John writes in 1 John 2, verse 6, Whoever claims to live, which is to abide or to remain in him, must walk as Jesus did, must show the consistent motion in their lives that Jesus showed. John can say after all these years, I've remained, I've remained, I've walked. A couple weeks back in in Bible study, I I shared about regaining the consistency of, of running as part of my morning routine. And Sherry said to me, on two different occasions, which is how I remember it. It's usually how it is in life. Somebody says something to you, not just once, but twice, and that's how it is in Scripture too. When we read a passage, usually what is said, what's important is said again, so that we remember it. And Sherry said two different times to me, following the pattern of Scripture. She said, you know, it's good you're running, but you should get up a little bit earlier and read Scripture at that time too. And I heard her the first time, but then she said it again. And when she said it again, it made me think, you know, she is right. And it's made a difference. I have changed that pattern, and now the morning includes at that time that as well. John says because we remain, we walk, and we walk in a certain way. We walk in the way Jesus did, and Jesus would speak things into our life. And so should we. And because... I've remained here, been here two plus years. Sherry has earned the right to speak into my life the way she did. Actually, who am I kidding? Sherry would speak into your life anyway. That's just who Sherry is, right? But because I've remained, I listen differently. I listen to Sherry as I would to a mother, as I would to a friend, as I would to someone who's gained my ear. And that's what John is saying. He says we need to walk as Jesus walked, which means sometimes we speak into each other's lives and we remain in relationship and we listen to what somebody else has to say. That's the value of church. It's the value of relationship. When I can say something to you and you will listen to it different than you would to somebody you didn't know because we've remained. We've been in relationship and especially we've remained in Christ. Now find Galatians 6, 14. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians is that section of Scripture. Galatians chapter 6. 
We remain in Christ and he remains and is seen in us. We walk the path together in Christ. And as we do this, we have one message. One message, Paul says, one consistent message that's lived more than it's spoken. And in Galatians 16, Paul writes, May I never boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Paul says that nothing is left to me, to him in life except the cross of Christ. Nothing distracts him, nothing competes, nothing replaces, nothing remains important to him other than the cross of Christ. So we are to remain, we are to walk, and we have the cross, R-W-C. That's the consistency that Christ brings to us. That's the consistency that we're taught in Scripture. That's how we live. It's how we speak. It's who we are meant to be. It's what Paul tells us life is about. So our very lives become a path that goes through life, that leads to the cross and to its power. And that power compels. That power through us changes people's hearts, even eternities. It resides in the power of the cross. Think about living in the power of the cross. Think about when somebody speaks poorly of you and you don't respond in kind or you don't respond at all. Or if somebody criticizes your work yet you remain steadfast in what you're doing. Whenever you do those things, you are making your way to the cross. You are living with the consistency of Christ. You are remaining in Him. You are walking as Jesus walked. All things that Jesus did on His way to the cross, on and from the cross, people will see those things in our lives. They'll see that consistency. Lives that remain and walk and that boasts only one thing, and that is the cross of Christ. The cross, Paul says, is what we have to preach and what we must live. We preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those whom God has called, both Jews and Gentiles, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. It seems too simple sometimes that our lives can boil down to one thing and one word, And one person who is Jesus consistent and constant. It seems like there should be more, but there really is not. Jesus who was was challenged in his consistency. Jesus who remained when one of his friends got up from the table and went out to betray him. Jesus who remained when he needed his friend's support and instead they fell asleep. Jesus who remained when he was alone with the Father. And said, Father, if it's possible, take this cup from me. And there was silence. Yet Jesus remained. Jesus who remained and walked and lived the cross when he was unjustly accused and verbally abused when he was spat upon and beaten and whipped. Jesus lived the cross until he was nailed to it and died upon it. Until he was laid in a tomb by Joseph and by Nicodemus, whom we heard about last week, who bore the body and blood of Christ literally upon himself. And then Jesus rose. And then Jesus overcame death and the power of the cross, that ugly, dark, deadly power was transformed and became the beautiful, dwelling, life-giving power of the cross that we know and live and breathe in Christ, our Lord. So that we remain and walk and live only the cross. We move into a time this morning that looks at that remembers, that focuses specifically on the cross and the consistency of Christ.
As we go there this morning, you might be at a place where the challenge in your life is to remain. Whatever that means at your place in life right now, to remain in Christ, that might be your challenge. Or your challenge as you come and receive communion this morning might be in your walk. Whatever you are at in your life where you have to walk through something, whether that's a journey to Idaho, like Roger and Joanne are on, that you have to walk through something that maybe last night you wouldn't have thought about. But things have changed suddenly and you have to walk and remain in Christ in that way. And maybe this morning, it is the cross itself. I think that even in communion sometimes, we just come, we receive the elements, and then boom, we're gone. Sometimes we need to remain at the cross and simply let God speak to us from there and recognize that it is not a cross of death, it is a cross of life given to us through Christ. So we're going to come in a few moments and you're going to receive bread as the body of Christ and the, and the cup representing the blood of Christ. And I would encourage you, if God speaks to you, to remain as you come on the steps, in the benches. Let God speak to you about what it means to remain, what it means to walk, what the cross means in your life and the lives of those who look to you. We're going to pray, and as we do that, I'd invite our servers and our musicians to come, and then for you to come as well. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for many things. We thank you that you are a Savior. We thank you that you are a life giver. This morning, Jesus, especially, we thank you for your consistency for your promise to remain in us through any and all things, for your consistency of your walk through extremely difficult times, and for the consistency of the cross which remains the thing that draws us, that gives us life, that gives us hope, that spurs us on. We thank you for your sacrifice. And we pray that as we receive the bread and the cup, we would be encouraged to remain and to walk and to see the cross. It's in your name we pray. Amen. The night that Jesus was betrayed, he took...